Hello, I'm John Shepard and in the following video we're going to take a look at the jumping of Ivana Spanovic and see whether we can learn anything from her excellent technique. Spanovic is one of the world's leading female long jumpers and indeed she has a best of over 7 meters 20. I was privileged to watch her at the Muller Grand Prix a couple of weeks back. One of my athletes, Jahisha Thomas, was also competing in the meeting. We'll take a look at various aspects of Spanovic's technique and I'm also going to compare some points that I identified with another one of my athletes, Sarah Abrahams, who also uses a hitch kick technique. Okay, let's start with the run-up and Spanovic uses a very deliberate and structured approach. In many ways, she uses an old school Eastern European start, which is more bounding as opposed to running the first strides. But then she transitions into the alignment phase and more upright running with a greater cadence. One thing that is quite noticeably different is the high arm carriage, which only drops to more normal levels over the last couple of strides into the takeoff. Okay, let's consider the takeoff, and you'll see that Spanovic stops pushing more and gets a more upright stance as she comes into takeoff. Now, this actual effort was a foul, so potentially she was adjusting her step to take off. But on the penultimate, she has sat back and dropped into the step. Nevertheless, her takeoff velocity is great, and you can really see the forward momentum, the free leg moving away from the body, and a straight takeoff leg, which will maximize speed transference. Interestingly, as I was pulling this video together, the IAAF launched its series of biomechanics videos from last year's World Indoor Championships. The stats seem to vindicate what I've been saying. For example, the negative torso angle, trunk angle at takeoff. This trunk angle may also be a consequence of a slightly longer, compared to other jumpers, penultimate step. You can download all the events from the IAAF Indoor World Championships biomechanics reports from the IAAF website. So here is the takeoff again, and you'll see that the takeoff position is actually held for about three meters before she moves into her hitch kick. There are a couple of points of interest with her hitch kick. One is the fact that there seems to be a slight lean back throughout the technique, and also, secondly, her arm action on landing. In this longer shot, hopefully, you'll see the two points more clearly that I've just made. Normally, for example, for the landing, the arms will be closer together and assist with the landing. Nevertheless, this quirk doesn't seem to affect the leg shoot and the distance gained by Spanovic. Having just said that, the IAAF research did indicate a loss of 10 centimeters on Spanovic's landing on her 6 meters 96 jump. Okay, we're now going to take a look at one of my jumpers, Sarah Abrahams, and her hitch kick technique and make some comparisons with Spanovic. Sarah's run up is perhaps not as deliberate as Spanovic's but it's very directed and goes through the same three phases. She also doesn't sit back quite so much on the penultimate step. Sarah also holds her takeoff position and then drops long into the first part of the hitch kick. And it's not that much of a great difference between the two of them at this point. The main difference results in what shall we say is the final third of the jump. Spanovic's superior speed takes her to a longer distance and also in particular her superior landing technique and ability to get her long legs out in front of her. 
this is something that those of you who have been following this channel will know has been a bit of an issue with Sarah. On this jump there was definite forward rotation and her arm action actually changed as well. Nevertheless it still displays the difficulty that she has in getting that extension and that long leg shoot. Making this video got me thinking and I wonder whether the slight layback on the penultimate step by Spanovic is there by design to create a better landing position. These superimposed shots of both jumpers really bring to light some of the similarities and the differences between the two jumpers. As you can see, the setups to the jump are not really that different, nor is the movement into the first hitch kick. It's after this point where the changes become more apparent. Perhaps because of that slight layback, Spanovic is able to keep her feet high and legs outstretched, whereas Sarah tends to let hers drop into the sand and thus loses valuable distance. OK, let's take a look at the two jumpers again and let's pay particular attention to the landings. And as I've said in this video, this is really getting me to think about the slight differences in the torso positions between the two jumpers and whether or not it could be worth experimenting with setting up the jump differently or trying to initiate a little bit of backward lean to enable Sarah to get her legs out more fully. And it's this that displays the art of coaching and the ability to try certain different things that maybe the textbook doesn't say you should, but could be a solution and could work. We have been working on it in training and these freeze frames will indicate that there has been some progress. However, it is difficult to do it within the confines of a competition where adrenaline and nerves can take over and old habits reappear. Hopefully the information provided in this video will help you and your jumping. Please subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below or on my other social media. And if you subscribe to the channel you'll also get access to more content, for example on my trips to athletics meetings and also short videos on drills and some of our workouts. Here you'll find a couple of examples of the type of content I'm referring to. We're back in training after the indoor season and have started to ramp up the plyometrics again. Here you'll see a typical array of the variations that we do You've got those that are more intense than others and those that work on the eccentric aspect, the blocking aspect. Everything being equal, the stronger the eccentric aspect of the stretch reflects, the more powerful the concentric power output will be. These single leg hops on and off boxes are probably the most intense exercise that we've done. And you can see Paul struggling a little bit on one of the reps. Notice the slightly different variations. <laughs> You're on video. And here's Sarah having a bit of fun before she drops off into an eccentric landing. OK, it's pretty chilly this morning and I'm on my way to Birmingham to watch Jahisha Thomas compete in the Grand Prix in the long jump and this is going to be my first experience of such a meeting. Right, getting on the train to Birmingham, just realised that in the field today we're going to see Ivana Spanovic and Juan Miguel Echevilla, so it's going to be a great competition. The competition took place at the Arena Birmingham, where the previous week Jahisha had qualified for the European Indoor Championships in Glasgow by coming second. There were seven athletes in the field and Spanovic was the only overseas entrant. It was also my first experience of such a meeting and I was lucky enough to be able to coach 
We're very close to the action. In competitions, I much prefer to watch with my own eyes rather than through the camera lens when filming athletes that I'm coaching. Strangely enough, I've found that the camera can often make performances look better than what they actually are and what you see with the naked eye, as it were, actually can give you more of an insight and more of an intuitive feel of what the athlete needs to do. Having said that, I did take the time to film Ivana Spanovic jumping for future analysis and you can see that she gets a superb range of motion throughout her hitch kick. Jahisha enjoyed the competition and competed very well but was having a little bit of difficulty converting her increasing speed into an effective takeoff and flight. And you can certainly see the great speed on this final attempt. Jahisha jumped 6 meters 36 and now has about two weeks to prepare for the Europeans in Glasgow. As I was very close to the long jump, I thought I'd stay and watch the male version and take a look at Juan Miguel Echevarria, who is something of a phenomenon. And I also, of course, took a look at some of the sprint action. Look out for some future videos that feature Spanovic and Echevarria and we'll take a look and see as to whether or not we can actually learn from the techniques of these top athletes. If you'd like to find out more about the free lap timing system, drop me a message.